everybody, it's Llewellyn here with Born to Whimsy. We are going to be working on this buffet that I've been working on right here and it's super, super bright and fun and pretty and I just wanted to have fun with something and do like a sunset scene. using Dixie Belle paints in the colors Cobalt Blue, Bunker Hill Blue, it's like a navy, uh, Peony is a pink, I'm probably going to use some Amethyst which is a purple, Aubergine is a dark purple, I have some black just in case I need it, Caviar, I will probably be using some cotton which is white, um, Daisy is yellow. Flamingo is an orangey color. I may end up using some honky tonk red and then my greens which are evergreen, palmetto, and kudzu. Cotton is of course my white. So we're gonna get started. I've decided to do an abstract sunset on this one. I have a small opal. I have a mini couple of those and I'll probably need the medium oval as well. What I'm going to do in the top and along the front on the top is I'm going to start with my darker blue which is Bunker Hill blue. It's like a navy color you can see it there and I'm going to lead that into cobalt and a hint of cotton. Alright guys so we're going to get started in the corner and we're going to be starting out with Bunker Hill blue this deep deep blue and I'm going to start over here And we're just gonna get a decent amount of that deep, deep blue in this corner. Um, I'm not loading up my brush too much. You can see it's just, just a bit of paint on there. And I'm gonna bring that over along the top. Um, I'm gonna have the paint cover this whole piece. So I'll also be coming back and doing a second coat. This is my rough coat, sort of like a test almost. If your paint starts to get loopy feeling, you can go ahead and spray it. And I'm just gonna bring that down just a little bit along this corner. And I am painting over my hinges. And I just decided to keep that door on. I will go back and sand all of this down too. So I'm gonna um, spray this a little bit. Just to keep it damp. And then we're gonna go into the cobalt. So here's cobalt, it's a nice bright blue. And then I'm gonna end up mixing just a hint of white in there, just to brighten it up a bit. And I'm just going to kind of take this uh, section at a time. So I'm going to get this section done and then we'll go into another section. So let's put a bit of cobalt on my brush, get it on there. I still have quite a bit on my brush, I didn't wipe it all off. So I'm just going to dip just a little bit, I have used this palette before, but just a little bit into that cotton. And we're just going to turn it into a brighter, more sky blue. Then we'll just blend it in, in a circular motion. I might even add a hint of green to this. So I want to lighten it just a little bit more. So I'm going to add a little bit more white in there. Blend it in really gently. I'm gonna get this part too because sometimes it's hard to blend them all the way across easily. So as it's wet, I'm just gonna keep moving this way slightly. And this will create like a really beautiful sort of transition. I'm gonna keep this damp. Um, it's kind of cold out here today, so it'll keep damp nicely. 
And this is just the first coat, so I'm just getting my colors in. You don't have to be too perfect. Pure Ocean is this really pretty blue. So let's go into that. Yeah, that's the right one. I think I want a little bit more of that. I'm just using the lid right now since I have other colors on my brush. And I'm just doing the circular, circular pattern. And I'm gonna get a bit more white, the white on my palette. So we're gonna lighten it as I move down. And I want it light and bright. And it almost creates a very cloudy look. I've got this going over here. Uh, we'll be adding in some clouds too as we go across, but that'll probably be with the second coat. This first coat is really to get my colors where I want them, just to lay down a good base. So I'm gonna grab a clean brush and almost clean. I'm gonna use just plain cotton on it. And we're going to head down into just a little bit lighter and wispier. We're just going to blend it up in there. I'm just going to do like little cross hatching sort of movements. And it makes it look a little bit like wispy clouds coming down. Um, I'll make sure with the second coat to really get everything blended really well, even on these little edges we have over here. And below this, we're going to end up doing some more sunset -y colors. And I'm not even using all that much paint. You can see I'm not even hardly loading up my brush very often. And I'm going to go in to some pink and orange colors. So I don't want to make green. So I'm going to grab this flamingo color first. And I might end up having to bring this up a little bit further for the second coat. Um, I didn't want any green, green in my sky, so that's why I picked the flamingo first. If you mix flamingo and blue, you get kind of a gray color, which is in a lot of sunsets, so that doesn't bother me. Now I'm going to get my daisy down here in the bottom. And I've been wanting this one to be a little bit of an abstract sort of a sunset, so we get to have fun. I wanted to have fun on this one. So go ahead and get your flamingo in there. And at the very bottom along your horizon line, I'm going to put some yellows. And then I'll probably come back through and add some purple clouds too. So we'll probably be covering up parts of this, but I like to get it really get it in there. And I'm just going back and forth and blending for this part. Super easy. Okay, so I'm going to put all these little white cloudies in here. And my second coat, I might end up just bringing this up a little bit because I do want to show off the land on this piece. Um, that's going to be a big part of my piece. It's going to be the land. So let's get some little areas where everything's getting lighter and brighter. So I kind of wanted these really, really bright colors in here. So as we move towards the center, uh, this is a little bit grayed out, which I do not want. I'm probably going to be using more pinks and more oranges. So I'm going to bring this up slightly from that other side, I'm just blending down the center. And I'm going to add some yellows in there. And you can come through with some purple streaks and it'll look like. So we want our center of our sunset. I'm going to put it right towards the middle. And add some more whites in there. Lighten it up a little bit. 
brighten it. Um, and I'm gonna go in some pinks too. This is Peony. And I'm just dipping the same brush in. Uh, honestly, I don't dip it in very far, so I'm not getting any other colors in here. I don't usually worry about it too much. And let's use some peony on this thing. Pretty. So we're gonna make some lower clouds kind of wisping down into this way. So I'm gonna get some of these paints and these colors up through here as well. All right, so let's get these blended in. I'm gonna spray it. I'm gonna use my blue brush and I'm gonna go in with my cobalt, which is my bright blue. And I really did wanna continue my cobalt kind of through here too. Um, and go into my pure ocean as well. And then we'll mix some white in with that. So now that matches over here, so that's good. Okay, let's go into this pink and it'll just kind of cause some purple, deeper, darker colors to come out. And we add some white, a little bit of white. for me to start working on my lamp so I'm going to start adding that in. I want to make some hills off in the distance and they're going to be reflecting the light so I'm going to have them um, like a darker version of the sky. Now I can always go in and add like the orangey tint to it like once once I've got them in there so I'm going to start with I do kind of a grayish color so I'm going to start with my bumper hill blue it's a deep deep navy color so I've got this little tiny brush. This is from, this is the round small. So it's the tiniest one in the line of paint brushes. And I'm just gonna add a hint of cotton. I already have cotton poured out on here. You can tell I used this already. I like to reuse my palettes, just, you know, less waste, less throwing stuff out, less garbage in my area. Okay, and if you wanna keep your paint a little bit moist, you can go ahead and spray it lightly. I just have water, it's just water. So it makes kind of a gray, gray blue. I've got Bunker Hill blue and cotton. And I'm just gonna go ahead and do my background hills. I like sit back and kind of look at this. <laughs> Always sit back and look at it and think about it. I have a little drawing that I did, but it's literally just a couple of lines on the paper. It sort of just sketched it out. So this is the part where I don't want to mess up my sky too much. So I'm going to try and keep my hills a little lower and I'm just going to run my paintbrush up just a little bit. So it almost, you see how it almost looks like grasses. Um, I'm going to lighten that slightly. That's a little bit darker than I wanted, but that is the joy of paint. I can come right back over it and lighten it slightly. And we're just getting these off in the distance sort of hills. So I'm just gonna bring it up a little bit, maybe even a little bit down towards what is gonna be my water. And as we go down towards the water, I'm gonna lighten it out and just blend it up into that. And I do want these to be taller, to, taller hills. Um, I'm gonna have another one on the other side too. I'm just gonna keep mixing my Bunker Hill Blue and I'm using that round, small brush. And I know it looks a little bit crazy right now, but I will be coming in, I'm like backing up to see it. I will be coming in and going over this 
um, and perfecting it too, you know. Probably come in with like a watered down darker blue and go right up along the top just so you can see them better. And I'm adding white to my bo the bottom of it. So it almost looks like it sort of fades out. And when I painted this, I already knew that I was gonna do the land, so that's why I kind of left this bottom part really rough. I wasn't too worried about that. Okay, so we're just gonna keep going. And I'm gonna keep bringing it right along doesn't have to be perfect, it can be up and down. You know, your land is never gonna be an absolute flat line. Well, at least not where I live. <laughs> at least not where I live, it's not gonna be a flat line just about anywhere. I'm over here in Washington State and it was like, I was out here getting ready for the live and it just started dumping outside, it was so loud. So I kinda like this bluish color up against that sky. I am gonna come in and add some of that orange, orangey color, almost like, you know, you can see it in the hills on this end. So I'm gonna lighten that up slightly. It's still a little bit wet and I might keep it a little bit wet just by spraying some water, just a little bit of water. So I'm gonna bring this back across this area. And as I move down the bottom, I lighten it out. And it's really just bringing my brush up like, like this. And I don't want to get it too light up there. It is along the horizon. Um, it's off in the distance, so it can be a little bit lighter than what's up close. Um, I'm going to be bringing in maybe an island or some sort of land right in here too. If you guys have any questions, jump, drop them in the comments. I always try to come back through and make sure I go through everything and read everybody's comments. I think I'm gonna start making this a little bit darker as we come out to the side. And I'll leave it a little bit lighter over there. And then I'm just gonna kind of do a like circly sort of a foggy, foggy blend. Like maybe it's a little misty off out there in the distance. And you can see from the brush strokes going up, it looks like little tiny trees. And I'm gonna come back down on this set, I think. So I kind of went up into a little peak up here, a little dark. And then come back down, I go to make sure you guys can see. It's so curved, this dresser is really curvy. It's got a nice, nice curve right here, but it also makes it tough for like, trying to get your dimension from straight on. I just wanted to make it slightly uneven, just not perfect, you know? And let me blend in the white at the bottom. And I'm just sort of wisping it into it, little circles. I didn't want it to be too perfect. Um, I might add a hint of like a purpley color. So I've got some pink. And if I mix it with my blue, it'll make kind of a purpley, hazy sort of a color. And I might get some of that in there too. I'm gonna get a little purpley over here. Maybe you're not seeing the light hit it as much, so get it a little more purple. And then, again, just blending it down. Make it look a little hazy. And I'm gonna come in with a smaller brush. See, I like that purpley color a little bit more than that um, grayish the gray blue, I kind of like adding that purple in there. So I'm just gonna make little teeny tiny brush strokes going up so they look like, you see how they just start to look like far off pine trees, most likely. And then I'll blend in my, it, that got a little bit dark, so I'm gonna, cause it was from over here. So I'm gonna blend in a little bit of my white so you don't see it so much. And you see how that just, I don't know if you guys can see that. Hang on. Let me bring you in a little bit closer. Hopefully it doesn't mess with my live. And I'm gonna have another hill going up on this side, but a little bit taller, I'm thinking, which is why I didn't really finish the other side too low over there. So let me get my purple color in here and we'll keep going. And I'm just gonna bring some up right here. And it doesn't have to be perfect. I'm just pulling the brush up. It's kind of a flat, 
flat brush you can see I'm just adding some more white in there because I got a little bit dark because it was from the side I had a little bit darker color over over here where the sun is not beaming directly at you it's looking so good it's giving it some depth I feel like adding that horizon line totally gives it depth and here up close you guys can see like it's just a bunch of little tiny brush strokes you know it's not perfect it's not perfect at all when you come up close you can see some of the dragging you know but when you step back that's what makes a painting so always make sure if you're doing something detailed to go ahead and step back and check it out so as i near the center i'm going to kind of make it so you know some of the light is reflecting off of it or coming through it so i might just do some pink so let's see if this is too dark and if it is i will add more white no, I like that. Yeah, I'm just going to add like little bits of it in here and then get a little heavier with it as we come down. And then I can also blend this down too. So I have that other brush that I was using, the Dixie Belle. It's the small round, my new favorite because it's, because it's small and I can get some of the details with it. And I'm just gonna wipe it on a towel really quick just to clean it off slightly. So we'll dip it in that, that glowing color that we had. And it's wet too, so it's kind of helping. That's kind of helping. You can even spray your piece if you wanna be able to just add a really light color. And I'm just gonna bring that color down just, just slightly down into that misty. And you can see how that kind of makes it look like the sun is shining through the trees ever so slightly down there. And I really like it now. I really like that part. I, I saw it on a few different paintings that I was looking at and decided to try it. And so I am glad I did. <laughs> this is my one, my new thing that I learned on this piece. So I haven't tried this before, just so you know, there is a first time for everything. I've tried sunsets and clouds, many clouds and lakes and land. Um, I do a lot of scenes on my pieces, but I have not tried this little glowing in the background thing. So you get to try something new. And I've just got, it's perfect because this is semi damp. It already had some of the blue on it from doing this part. So I'm just blending it in. I'm gonna add a little bit up here, just like a hint but I don't really want it down the back of the hill. I'd rather have it up the front because the back is gonna be more shadowed. But the sun's over here, somewhere, somewhere off in the distance. Okay, I think we've got just about enough of that. Done just about enough of that on there. Now I'm gonna lighten it out as we come down. Use that same brush, the small round. And I'm just going to add some cotton in there and just really gently. It's still, still kind of damp up here because we've been working with it a lot. So I'm going to just mist it out because it's kind of far away. So you don't need to see the details down below. Yep. I like that. That's looking pretty good. So let's add some more of these trees. And I've got the blue color on there. Mostly blue, mostly blue. But it's right up against this really pretty sky. So I feel like they might have a little hint of that sky color in there too, with that much, which it does now because I'm using the same brush. But with that much light going on in the background, Okay, I think I'm liking that so far. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come down a little lower and we're gonna add in some of the land. I will come back over here and do those little tiny tree marks. For right now, I'm just gonna blend it right down and I'm gonna do my other little island sort of thing coming out right here. I'm gonna get this 
hint of pink in here and just kind of blend it down into that pinker, the more pink stripe that I had. Because it's going to get really bright in here. I'm going to have a lot of highlights coming through. My sun's going to be here, so highlights coming through here. I'm just slowly working, working my way down. So I usually start with the sky and I'll block in the water. And then I redo the sky and start working on the land. And when I say blocking in, it's just a really, really sort of simple, you know, here's where this color goes. And maybe I'll put a cloud right here, you know, so you do bright pink and white and stuff. Okay, so let me get my island in there. I'm going to do, it's a little bit closer as it comes down. It comes towards us to get us that depth. So everything that I do down here is going to be a little bit brighter. Or should I say deeper? And a little bit more detailed and larger. And I don't want it to be too perfect. I want it to be kind of hazy still. But I'm going to come in here and do some little tree marks. These are just the trunks. So I'm like, this is going to go here and here and here. Let's sit back. See if that's what I want. Yep, that's what I want. Thinking, thinking. I kind of want them to be sort of almost misty between them. Um, I might have to come in with a small brush and just, you know, just kind of mist between them. So I want my brush to be relatively wet. I just dipped it in water. And I've got the Bunker Hill Blue and White mixed. And then I'm just going to do these little back and forth trees. Like super simple with the fan brushes. Back and forth. Maybe this one's a little taller. So I'll bring them up so you can see some definition. And I just go one way then the other. Then one way then the other. And I've done these on a few other pieces. I might even add some of my pinkish color in there just to like sort of let it be a little bit less blue and a little bit more gray. I didn't want them to, I wanted a few of them to like really stand out, you know, and then I wanted some of them to be, you could almost not see them like hardly there. So I'm trying to find that perfect color for hardly there. Sometimes I get too light. Let me grab some more Bunker Hill. I'm almost out of that. I usually just grab it a little bit at a time from my little can and I'll get a new brush for that because the other one's real filled with paint. So I just get a little bit at a time and put it on my palette. Got a little bit light. I'm trying to find that perfect color. I think a lot of, you know, making the painting look Correct is about finding the right color when you're, when you are painting. So I want some to look kind of like they're in the background. They're almost misty, you know? So I think I'll go in with this lighter color and do a few in the background. And then I can come over them with, add some of that bunker heel back in and do a darker color up in the front. Okay, so we're doing the lighter ones. They don't have to be perfect. Just super like keep them kind of thin don't get too wide and then get wider as you go down and they're one of my favorite ones too i'm pretty sure pretty sure it's a bob ross thing but i have learned a ton from from him now if you feel like they're too much or they're too perfect you can spray them lightly and they'll just kind of drip down just a little bit. It'll make it a little more fuzzy and less perfect. And I'm going to make it look misty, sort of like I did. Just mist it, you know? So you don't quite know where it ends. I wanted it to be like a misty. Maybe it's a morning. I think it's a morning. What do you guys think? And I'll come back through here too and add some. Yeah, see, this is still bothering me. <laughs> I'll have to fix that in a minute. I need to let it dry though before I really mess with it. Yeah, this part's starting to look really good. I like this whole misty, mystical looking feeling it has. Let's add some yellow because there's more yellow in the sky. And Daisy's a really bright yellow, so I'm going to add some white to that just to sort of balance it out a little bit with the rest of the colors. 
I'll probably put a sun up here. And when I do put the sun up there, that'll be my brightest, brightest spot on the canvas. I mean, on the furniture, which is my canvas. <laughs> I suppose I could call it a canvas. Too much. Okay, so we're getting hints of this yellow in here. This will be peeking through. I still have to come in and add some, you know, darker colors for my, where the ripples would be and stuff. And then the really bright light white for my sun and the little lines on the water. Just give me some hints. I'm almost dry brushing it now. Just adding in all those colors from the sky. Okay. And then I can deepen it and go back to blue down here. I mean, we're kind of coming full circle and you just do what's up here and then you slowly work down. As you go down, you go through the colors, what you would going up, up here. So let's grab a different brush and I'll add my deep blues. It looks like I got a little carried away when I was, well, you know what? I feel like I do want it bright down there. It's a hard in between. I might keep it bright and then just kind of dim it out on the sides into that blue sky color. So let's do a nice blend and just get it really nicely blended. So I'm gonna add some of those sky colors back in here just a little bit and just blend it right in. It doesn't have to be perfect, so just kind of blending it into the side there. This one's gonna be so bright and pretty. And see, I kind of got rid of my trees but that's okay because I can come back and fix those. I'm sitting a little bit, or I mean my tree shadows. I'm sitting a little bit sideways too right now, so. <laughs> For the details, I probably should be more straight on. And I'll blend some white down into that. Maybe add some coming in here. And I always go kind of back and forth on this stuff. like. I'll come further out with this right here, you know. You can go back and forth on your colors all the time. I want to thank you all for being here. And I hope you guys have a good rest of the week. I will be live here again on the Dixie Bell page next Sunday at 4 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. You guys have a good night. Bye.